George A. Bubinick, a physiologist and professor of zoology at the University of Guelph in Ontario, explains. Imagine swimming in a lake on a hot summer day. The water is quite warm, but the wind is strong, and the moment you leave the water you feel chilly and get goosebumps. So you change clothes and move inside to warm up. You make a nice cup of tea, get under a blanket and switch on the radio. Suddenly, you hear a song from a long time ago, the song your grandmother used to sing to you when you were a child. Again, you feel a chill on your back and again you get goosebumps. Why do such seemingly unrelated events elicit the same body reaction? The reason for this is the physiology of emotions. Goosebumps are a physiological phenomenon inherited from our ancestors, which was useful to them, but are not of much help to us. Goosebumps are tiny elevations of the skin that resemble the skin of poultry after the feathers have been plucked. Therefore we could as well call them turkabums, gooseflesh, chili bums, duck bumps. And the scientific term is pillarections. These bumps are caused by a contraction of miniature muscles that are attached to each hair. Each contracting muscle creates a shallow depression on the skin surface, which causes the surrounding area to protrude. The contraction also causes the hair to stand up whenever the body feels cold. In animals with a thick hair coat, this rising of hair expands the layer of air that serves as insulation. The thicker the hair layer, the more heat is retained. In people this reaction is useless because we do not have a hair coat, but goosebumps persist nevertheless. Getting goosebumps could boost hair growth. In a new study, a Harvard scientist reported that getting goosebumps not only makes the hair stand up, but it also helps grow hair faster. Nerves and muscles that raise goosebumps also stimulate stem cells in the skin to make hair follicles and grow hair. Yuchaya Su, a stem cell researcher at Harvard University, explained, nerves that are a part of the sympathetic nervous system, which controls pupil dilation, pulse, and other automatic processes, settle alongside organisms that make hair follicles. Sue along with her colleagues, found that nerves also secrete a hormone called norepinephrine that is responsible for hair growth. Sympathetic nerves and goose bump raising muscles may also be important in that type of baldness. Restoring the nerves and muscles may lead to new hair growth.